Hello, everyone. My name is Cade Gordon, and welcome to the first podcast on this channel, C-A-I-D, Cade, which is just a different way to spell my name. This is going to be the first of a podcast series called Series of Greats, the first being a personal story of mine about my great-grandfather. I never personally got to meet my great-grandfather as he died in January of 2004, a couple months before I was born. My great-grandfather, Keith Naylor, was a World War II hero. He enlisted in the military right out of high school at the beginning of World War II. They left for Java mid-1942, and they landed on the islands on March 8, 1942, where they were immediately bombed. The USS Houston sank and most of the prisoners died. The ship that my great-grandfather was on was bombed, but the bombs went down the smokestack. The smokestack is right above the boiler room, and the boiler room holds the boiler. The bombs went down the smokestack into the boiler room and blew the boiler to pieces. The boiler blew up, and it looked like the ship was sinking. So the pilots on the ship took the planes and left. My great-grandfather was not a pilot, unfortunately, so he was left to the mercy of the Nips. He called them this because the enemy called their country Nippon. All the soldiers were told to surrender. However, my great-grandfather and some of his buddies were not going down without a fight. So they decided to escape into the jungle. They were in the jungle, one of the most fiercest climates in the world, for six weeks. Before I go on, I want you to imagine you come from Texas, where it's dry. You know, it's never never too humid. It gets humid around here pretty, pretty often. And now you're stuck in a jungle with no food, no water. It's humid. There's bugs everywhere. You have no place to sleep. That was his life for six weeks. After six weeks, they decided it would be in their best interest to surrender due to the fact that they were going to starve. The Nips had not yet left the island because they knew that there were soldiers who had escaped. Once all the soldiers were accounted for, they were loaded onto two troop ships and they were taken to Southeast Asia. The prisoners were taken to camps in Burma. They were forced to clear the jungle and build the Burma Railroad. The Burma Railroad is also known as the Death Railway and was just one of the harsh labors that my great-grandfather and many other prisoners of war were forced to do. 100,000 civilians and 16,000 prisoners of war died building this railway. My great-grandfather was beaten by the Korean guards. The Koreans had always been the underdogs in every situation, so when they were handed any power, they absolutely abused it. At one point, Kiefer's group was taken to islands in Japan. He claimed that the Japanese were quite honorable and fair to their prisoners. He would still be beaten, but nothing compared to the Koreans. He was fed a piece of bread every day, dirty drinking water. It was a horrible conditions for living. The prisoners would be at camp until the jungle was cleared and the railroad was extended. Then they would march north to a different camp and work there. People always ask if they could have escaped. The answer is probably, but where would they have gone? They really didn't know where they were. Sometimes they would sneak a radio in and find out the status of the war. And they were always encouraged when American planes would fly overhead. But that encouragement didn't last long as they would come and go. This was his life until August of 1945. After the atomic bombs had exploded on the 6th and the 9th of August and Japan had surrendered to the United States, the Japanese commandment lined them all up and told them that President Truman had accepted their surrender and that United States planes would be coming soon to pick them up. At first, they didn't believe it because they had never heard of President Truman. FDR had been the president when they were all captured. And if you know anything about World War II, FDR died in the middle of World War II due to his disease. Hallelujah Day was August 29th. The first American planes landed to take them home. The British, who Kiefer could not stand because they were so pompous, were lined up and ready to go. When the American pilots got out, the British said, We'll go first. The pilot said, when every American is home, we may come back for you. As a joke, of course. 
My great-granddad was the first Lost Battalion member back in Texas. He said families were calling for days asking about their loved ones, some he had knew the fate of, but he refused to tell them. His mother was so excited to see him alive, and when, she was, when he was asked what he wanted, all he responded with was a Coke. This is a story of a group of men, the Lost Battalion, who gave everything so you could have anything. Thank you again so much for joining me while I talk to you a little bit about my great-grandfather. I hope to see you back again, and as always, God bless.